is one of the rarest turtles you guys are ever going to see, especially on social media. Sure is, oh my god, Chitra Vandekii, the Burmese narrow-headed giant soft-shell turtle. And these are obviously, um, you know, like yearlings. This species is incredibly aggressive. I told you guys last week that we had an exciting new animal here at Garden State Tortoise. Well, we had to rent a U-Haul van to come all the way up to Maurice Rodriguez's place to pick up the enclosure for this turtle. So, come on. So do you want, want to build this out first? Yeah, and, sure, and then, whatever you want to do. Yeah. We gotta go this way, because that door is not wide enough. Okay. And then we're gonna put out this doll. Uh, Obviously, uh, you know, like yearlings. The Timorensis are first born. Are they like the black and the orange? Color? They have the orange They're on, on, the, on the carapace, yeah. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm the plastron. Eastern mud turtles, you know, they, they hatch with the really vibrant plastron, a little bit more bolder coloration, they lose that with age. Right, right, but even, right. even red belly turtles, yeah, yeah, they yeah, start yeah, off right. with that insanely colored plastron, and then by the time they're adults, they don't really need that bold coloration anymore. They feel exactly. incredible. So. What else we got? We have little box turtles. You guys breed a ton of these. I, I, found, I keep every time I go outside, I find them. I got, uh, Japanese wood turtles. Oh, uh, cool! These guys are, are are hatching naturally here in my yard, and uh, and this is going to Anthony. When I I forgot to bring it to him. Uh, uh, of course, but let's see. We got a cool little. Pearl River oh, map turtle. So cool. Little what beauty. a beautiful animal. Yeah. It's just really cool. Time to get wet. Should we grab Ruby first? There she is. Oh, wow. So this is one of the rarest turtles you guys will ever see, especially on a social media video. This is Ruby, and she's a Batiger Trivitata, which is the Burmese roofed turtle, and she's the only female in our country. Correct. Right? So she is in dire need of a boyfriend because it's a critically endangered species that is in need of being reproduced, put more of them out there. So uh, there's some potential news on the way that we're not going to share yet, right? Correct. Uh, but it's looking like there might be a bright future for this turtle. So you guys are just going to have to wait for a future video to see if that actually takes place. But look at that. Look at that nose. Isn't that incredible? And she can just come up to the surface and stick the tip of her snout out of the water to breathe and otherwise kind of go undetected. Man, and she's not the biggest one, right? They get bigger. No, they this. get much bigger. She's a little stunted because her diet for 20 years was not correct. Uh, she's basically an aquatic cow. I've said this before. She uh, she's supposed to just eat uh, mostly vegetation, and, and incidentally, she'll eat you know snails that are on the plants. Right. And she'll eat invertebrates and stuff like that. But mostly, she eats vegetation, and she did not have that kind of diet before. She was on pellet food, uh, too high in protein, so she's a little stunted. But she is putting on weight, and she might be growing actually. She, she's so heavy, and you know. <laughs> she, even though she's stunted, that's still a huge turtle. Um, interestingly, the males look nothing like this. Well, the males in breeding color, yeah. uh, the head gets this beautiful uh, green with a black stripe. It's, it's quite remarkable. So yeah, the, the males are very different, and the males, will, their shell will turn green and get these black stripes on them. It's incredible. So males actually go into a breeding coloration. Let's set her down. Okay, Ruby. I'm wet. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. 
I love these. Yeah, I just got That's Cora Trifasciata, which is the golden coin turtle. Yet another very endangered Asian species of turtle. They're basically one of Asia's versions of a box turtle. So cool. Okay, so the reason we're here is because if you've been following our videos, you might know who Scuttle is. He is the male fly river turtle, also known as the pig nose turtle, Coretichelys and Sculpta, that we got from the Jenkinson's Aquarium last year. Well, we managed to get our hands on an adult female, which is a very big deal because you don't usually see females available anywhere, whether they're being sold or they're even for rescue situations. It's always these big males that have to live alone, yada yada. Well, I got invited to a very special person's very special place, and that's Dr. Bill McCord. I got to go see his turtle collection recently, and I ended up leaving with an adult female fly river turtle. If you don't know who Dr. McCord is and you're into turtles, stop watching this video right now and go look him up. He has the most published papers on turtle taxonomy you can think of, and there's even species that have been named after this man. Cora McCordi is one for example. So, let me stop rambling. We left with a beautiful, perfect, adult female fly river turtle. And as you know, a lot goes into keeping this species safe and healthy. And that's where, once again, our good friend Maurice Rodriguez has come into play. <laughs> so, he's the one who came down and got Scuttle all set up correctly. And now here we are again, picking up basically the exact same style tub that Scuttle lives in, where this new female is going to live in, so that we can condition them to hopefully one day breed them. Because that's been kind of an impossible task in herpetoculture across the board. There's only been a few reported hatches of this species, so we're up for the task. We're going to try to figure it out. Uh, the turtles nest in a place where once the you know the rainy season comes into play, uh, the the nests get flooded, and when they get flooded, it triggers the eggs to basically explode and hatch. And you can actually go online. There are some videos where people have done that, where they've taken an egg that's about to hatch, put it in water, and you'll see that turtle, um, um, you know, hatch. So yeah, they, they lay very close to that water line where you know when it floods, it helps them hatch. So when you compare that to other turtle and tortoise species, that would be a major no. If you were to go drop a Herman's tortoise egg in the water, you just drown that baby. Same thing would happen with a box turtle. But interestingly, water and rains and seasonal triggers are the reason why a lot of these species hatch. So, you know, up here in the Northeast, our native turtle species like North American wood turtles, diamondback terrapins, spotted turtles, box turtles, they lay their eggs in the spring and early summer and they're timed to hatch with the fall rains. So a lot of times even in our own care, you know, and I'm sure you do too, you go walk around your turtle pens in the morning after a warm rain in late summer, early fall, you're guaranteed to find baby turtles if you know there are nests in the ground. Or even during the rain, like literally while it's raining, you go out and you find babies all the time. Yeah. Actually, just this, uh, just this past summer, we got a video of baby eastern box turtles coming up out of the nesting chamber during the rain. So, the water aspect of things, not so far-fetched. But when it comes to the fly river turtle, we're dealing with a species that goes against the grain for pretty much everything that we are familiar with with turtles when it comes to certain and, and it's the only freshwater turtle with flippers like a sea turtle. So you would expect the hatchling to have to be very close to water when it hatches, just like a sea turtle. It, it needs that water right away because it doesn't really have a way to get around on land. It, it has flippers. So if you're wondering why we didn't just go ahead and set this turtle up with what we had at our disposal at Garden State Tortoise is because this animal has specific needs. Water quality is important, substrate at the bottom is important, drainage, everything that goes into it. Um, it might seem like a simple environment to you guys, but it's well thought out because these animals have very sensitive skin. Uh, they're susceptible to sores and abrasions and lesions, uh, among other things like funguses. And once they get stressed out or once they drop to a certain temperature, those things start to break out in them. So we got to try to keep them as comfortable and stress-free as possible at all times. Here, here's an example. Like at my place here, I happen to find this sand. And this sand, very interesting. It's a, it's a silica sand. It's very, very fine. But it has a high amount of calcium in it. 
It's mined actually in New Jersey where I live in the Pine Barrens near you. But because of the high calcium content, it keeps the pH of my water perfect. I, ne I never even check my pH because I know it's always perfect. Uh, and, and this is a big uh, contributing factor to their health. And also because it's such a fine sand, imagine how nice that is for them to claw into or just move around. When you have a hard substance like a, even plastic or glass their whole life, their hands can get swollen, their nails uh, get messed up. This is just nice and soft and it reduces stress and it makes for happy turtles. It goes right back to that fish tank thing. We showed you guys just recently why fish tanks are not good for certain species, particularly box turtles, and the same thing. Things become abrasive to them. They're constantly trying to get out. They don't understand what glass is. They try to dig down, they try to dig, dig out, and they end up causing all kinds of issues for themselves. And that stress, the stress level just breaks out. It's an end all for them. Before we head out, I want to show you guys yet another amazing, bizarre, endangered species. Um, if I can grab it. Let's see here. So this is going to be. It's being not good. <laughs> this crazy creature is, oh my god, Chitra vandykii. The Burmese narrow-headed giant soft-shell turtle, and we just measured her carapace. She is exactly 24 inches across. That's not including head and tail or anything else. That's just the carapace. It is two feet long, and they can get to be upwards of three feet. Oh my god, <laughs> she's definitely stronger than me. Oh. So this is one of Maurice's prize breeding projects here, and uh, we are hoping that he has much success with them. I'll put it back in because I'm soaked. <laughs> because they are a highly endangered, amazing turtle that is truly in need of being captive produced to help put more of them out there. Can't say it enough. And uh, I didn't need a minute to catch my breath. So Maurice has given us his blessing and the green light to go ahead and try to give it a shot at breeding the fly river turtles. But uh, Really, it's he, in my opinion, that is the expert. And uh, he's doing amazing stuff here. We're always annoying you with questions, I know. But, uh, yeah, uh, my arms hurt. So when I come to Maurice's, I learn a lot, and I also get a workout. <laughs>we got the sand we once again had a great day here with Maurice Maurice really is a wealth of knowledge I can't say enough good stuff about him and if you're wondering why he has such endangered turtles like this and why we do what we do it's because it's in the best interest of the animals we're doing this to preserve them and Maurice is one of the founders of the famous turtle conservancy so need I say any more so let's hit the road let's go back and let's get our brand new fly river turtle set up and we also have to come up with a name so it's a new day we've got both tubs situated here scuttles used to be right in the middle of the room but we drained that moved it back and put it right up against our new fly river tub tank here and the turtles are gonna live side by side but not together because this species is notorious for not getting along as you just saw at Maurice's place these are the tubs that he uses with long-term success and they're great for these fully aquatic species a fly river turtle does not require a basking area so a fully aquatic environment with the proper substrate is really what it needs deep water is important and uh, scuttle that's been in one of these tubs for a while now is just doing absolutely fantastic in it so big tub it's deep it's durable we have the plumbing already into it, so all we have to do is open these drains, out goes the water, and we could do very simple, effective water changes. Water quality is very important for fly river turtles, so a little bit has gone into making sure that these two tubs are ready for our turtles. So number one, 
what I do is I make sure I have filtration. I have a sponge filter in each of these hooked up to an aerator. And then I even have a Fluval U4 on each one of these to continue with cycling the water, filtering it, and pushing it around. Because, you know, these turtles can't be in stagnant, dirty water. It's just bad situation for them. Their skin is very sensitive to that kind of stuff. In addition to that, I have submersible tank heaters in here to keep the water warm in the 70s. Anywhere between 75 and 78 is where I like to see it. That's where I notice the turtles are most active. Two other important factors here. I have added some marine aquarium salt, about a cup and a half to each tub. That further adds with keeping things like fungus and lesions on the shell and skin at bay. I highly recommend you do that. Uh, and then of course we have the beautiful soft silica sand with high calcium content at the bottom of this. They've got, I think, between six and eight inches of it at the bottom. And that's important for them because they can move around in it and silt through it and kind of push it around and, and have fun with it, which is great for them because it's a kind of way for them to hide a little bit if they want, even though they're a very outgoing species. And also the biology of these environments is going to be contained within that sand. So you might be asking, what do we do to ch when we have to change it? Well, we don't change it. Similar to the outdoor ponds here that I've gone over with you guys many times, like Chief Brody's Pond, for example, the biology in the sediment in the pond is what keeps the water quality where it needs to be. It keeps it a bioactive situation and it is fully beneficial to the turtles. We do water changes about once to twice a week and when we do that we just drain them and then let the hose run for a little while but we don't touch that sand, then close the drain, let it fill back up, let it warm back up and then the turtles get to go back in. So we're pretty much set up. Remember, this is the indoor setup for these animals. We have big plans for them coming up in the not so distant future. So you're gonna have to stay tuned for that. And uh, it's time. Let's get Scuttle back in his and let's introduce you to our new female flyover turtle. Okay, turtle time here. It's time to put Scuttle first back in his enclosure. Now, uh, to give you a little background on Scuttle in case you didn't catch it in the original video, he came from the Jenkinson's Aquarium where he lived for 18 years after being confiscated by New Jersey Fish and Wildlife. He was being kept illegally and, uh, well, he lived at the aquarium, but they are doing some serious renovations there now, so Scuttle has been sent to us to live here. He's going through a little bit of treatment still for the uh, markings on his shell, but he's healed up really nicely and he is more than ready to go back into his enclosure. Right, buddy? Here we go. There you go. And here she is. This is our brand new adult female fly river turtle from Dr. Bill McCord. And uh, she's in absolute pristine condition. Super excited to have her. And you know, I wanna give you guys a little background real quick on this species, which is truly unique. Right off the bat, you're gonna notice that fleshy pig-like nose, and that's where the turtle gets its second name, pig-nosed turtle. Coretta Kelly's in Sculpta is the scientific name, and they are the only living member of that genus. That means any and all others that were once part of Coretta Kelly's, uh, or at least synonymous with it, are now extinct. They have flippers, just like a sea turtle. See that? Why do they have these flippers? Well, that is actually what they use to evade predation. They are rapid, powerful swimmers in deep water because they really have nothing else to protect them from harm. And they use these back flipper-like appendages here, which are their hind legs, as a rudder. This species is omnivorous. They do eat less animal matter than many other omnivorous species, but they will absolutely help themselves to it if it is available. So they eat things like fruits and greens, pellets that are suited to their species. And then they get some other fun stuff too. Another interesting fact, check this out. You see that beautiful white pinkish plastron and complete underside? That's what they use to blend in. So when there's a predator or potential predator swimming underneath them, when it looks up, it has a hard time noticing the turtle because this is so light colored that it doesn't cast the same kind of dark figure or shadow that something else would. So between that and being able to swim so fast and so powerful, this animal can get away from predators. And of course they use that adorable little pig nose to stick up just out of the surface of the water to get air without having to reveal the rest of the body. So what do you say we put her in and let her start getting used to life here at Garden State Tortoise. So 
if our objective here is to breed this amazing species, why aren't the two of them living together, you might wonder. Well, as I've said before, this species is incredibly aggressive. They will seriously injure each other and oft, more often than not, the female is the one that will go after the male. So uh, that's actually some of the problems that Dr. McCord has been having over the years with trying to breed these. He would put a male in with a female and the female would attack the male. Now breeding is a vigorous event. It's not meant to be lighthearted or anything like that, so there is a certain amount of it you have to stomach when you do put these turtles together. There are a few people out there that are keeping them in groups successfully in these massive setups and even having a little bit of luck with reproduction. So we're going to plug away to try to learn as much as we possibly can and give it our best shot at eventually introducing these two and allowing them to breed. But for now, they really just need to have their own spaces, get used to life here, because, you know, Scuttle's only been here for a little while. He hasn't been here for years. And obviously our new lady just got here. Making sure that an unnecessary fight doesn't ensue is really important with them. And their shells, although hard, are covered in a leathery sensitive skin that can also easily be injured. So we don't want anything to happen unnecessarily, but you will see adult fly river turtles, both in captivity and the wild, that have gone through breeding events having some scarring. It's just what comes along with the territory. But that's why you know, I really want to keep them separate and across the board it seems to be what people really recommend doing. But our beautiful new lady friend here does not have a name, and that's where you GSTers come into play. We want you guys to come up with the best possible name for this lovely female, and what I'm gonna do is, Post a comment, it'll be pinned to the top of the comment section of this very video, asking you what you think her name should be. And then what we'll do is we'll pick the best ones and we'll run a poll on the community page of our YouTube channel, similar to what we've done in the past. And that is how this lovely lady will be named. So by next Sunday's video, she will be named and we will announce that in the video. So there you go. That's her beautiful, amazing Australian, Papua New Guinea, and Indonesian species of freshwater turtle. Not a sea turtle, but in every way just as unique and special, the Fly River Turtle, Coretta Kelly's, and Sculpta. Get going with those names!